Welcome to Mage 6 Live. This week with me, I have Julian Sparger of uh, Fractal, and we are going to talk about uh, Fractal Next. So, to begin with, uh, Julian, can you tell us what Fractal Next is? So, Fractal Next is the initiative to rewrite Fractal from scratch. Um, there, there are a lot of different reasons why uh, we wanted to do this actually for a long time already, but um, as probably most developers know that rewriting stuff is hard and you lose a lot of features and you have to do a lot of extra work. So we didn't do it for years and but still, we wanted to improve the code base um, because Fractal was written mostly while learning Rust uh, and GTK by most of the team. So the code base was, could have been better. Um, but why did we do it right now? It's mostly just the move to GTK4, which is the tool, uh, graphical toolkit we are using. And GTK4 is the new version of that, which just came out, um, I think, last year. Um, so there was one thing which changed a lot. So we would have to touch most of the of the code anyways, which was a good reason to restructure the app itself and make it better. Additionally, there is now a matrix Rust SDK, which is basically a library which handles most interaction with the matrix server, with the home server, and implements most of the encryption and a lot of, of specific things related to matrix, which makes it much more simple um, to build a matrix client. So with those two main reasons, we decided to just start over and make it as good as possible and improve on the project. And so far, I think it was worth it. We are far from done, but um, we are getting there. Okay, that sounds good. So moving to GTK4 and the uh, rest of the K, and improving the overall quality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's also the current status? now? It's sorry. What's the current status? So the current status is that you can log in, you can view your rooms, you can join rooms, you can create rooms, you can leave rooms. Um, so many, many of the basic features work already. But we also have encryption support already, which is kind of secret because uh, you can't out authenticate your device. So it's not really useful, but it works. But we got it for free from the SDK because we're using the SDK, which ha had a lot in that direction. Um, what else? You can explore rooms. You can actually have, which is an exciting thing. You have. We have multi-account support, like you can be locked in in multiple accounts at the same time, even though you can only send text messages, nothing else, which we did not get around to do. Um, I'm currently working on the session verification or device verification as a cross-signing for your own devices. Next will be for other users that you can verify other users. That's, That's pretty nice. much the current state. Mm -hmm. And so you said only text messages you currently cannot send. Can you see other types of messages? Actually, no. Like, we only have support for text messages, but also for state, uh, state events for rooms, like leave and join. As, so pretty much everything w which could, uh, which is text, is already already visible in the room history, but nothing else. It's just okay, so a lot of work. It's more to... or less an IRC client for now. Yeah, pretty much. 
Okay. Well, it's a good start. Yeah, you mentioned multi account so. support that was done by Alejandro during uh, some of code, I think. Yes. Um, so Alejandro during the summer worked on um, multi account support for Fractal Next um, with me and Daniel, the original writer of, of Fractal, um, as mentor. And um, but also, Fractalnex was from the beginning already thought to be multi account, uh, like to have multi account support. And uh, in during the GSOC, it was mostly the uh, user interface, but not only. So we had to do some restructuring, and I'm pretty happy that we got it in. And yeah. Alejandro did a good job. It's a good feature to have. I think it's yeah. one of the most requested features in Elements. I can imagine that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty useful. Honestly, it's extremely use useful for me for testing. Like, <laughs> just have different accounts where I do different things. And so what does it look like? Can you see all rooms from all accounts in the sidebar at the same time? No, they're actually, uh, they're, we have an account switcher. So you have a fractal window. If anybody already used fractal, then they know that they have like the sidebar, like an element, and then the content on the right. And it's pretty much the same in fractal next, except that um, you can switch between different accounts by a pop up, uh, pop over. I see. Okay. And speaking of uh, some of code, you had another intern, Kai. Yeah, we, we also had Kai, who had a lot in structuring Fractal Next and had the biggest focus on the room history um, room details, like to be able to view the avatar, change the room name, the room topic. Um, he also started working on managing room members and the power level which uh, is still a work in progress, but he did a great job on that and also on other parts of the app, which I can't recall right now, but he was um, having a lot. Was it your first time mentoring? It actually was. It was a really fun experience. Like I, I did um, GSOC like four years ago with with Fractal, um, and now mentoring is, is it's just a different experience, and it was fun. And um, the biggest problem actually was that Fractal Next was like all up in the air, like nothing was set in stone. So also communicating with students uh, was not that easy about how we should do things because we were still at the point where we needed to figure out how how the code will look like but it was a great experience like um i i definitely gonna do it next year too cool um but you already helped newcomers before right yeah i actually have been a uh, mentor for an outreach student okay but uh, I was a co-manager, sorry. I was a co-manager. Um, and in general, uh, like we, we accept a contribution from everybody who wants to contribute to Fractal. We had a lot of um, new people in, in the project. Also over the summer, before GSOC, other students were there as well. And following them and reviewing merge requests, explaining how things work. It's, it's a lot of work, but also awarding and a lot of fun. So what if someone wants to contribute to Fractal now? What's, what should they do? Best thing is join the Matrix channel, say hi there. Um, maybe ask for a task. We also have on, the, on our issue tracker in GitLab, GNOME GitLab, that is um, issues called newcomers which are generally easy 
um, easy issues or bugs which can be fixed without much knowledge about Fractal itself. Um, but probably you need some knowledge about GTK and definitely about Rust or you're gonna be ha have a hard time, but um, we also can you direct to sources to learn Rust, to learn uh, GTK, um, to look into the bindings. Um, and yeah, best way is to come say hi and um, and pick something which annoys you. Like it, it helps a lot if, if you know what you wanna do like if you see some color mismatching or a font is too big or something, I don't know, something stupid which bugs you, just try to fix that. Like that's that's the best way to get into it. Yeah, that's which actually, like a good approach. It, it actually was for me like um, back then when Fractal was the first thing like four years ago or something like that. Um, I came to Fractal pretty much for that reason. And now I'm pretty much the maintainer. Yeah, I'm the maintainer of it. And I, I really start fixing just something in, in CSS, like nothing else. OK. So going back to the rewrite, you mentioned the matrix Rust SDK. Can you say something about that? Are you also working on the SDK as part of your work on uh, Fractal? So yes. So matrix, uh, the matrix Rust SDK is basically a library which offers a lot of uh, base fu functionality to work with with matrix. Um, it makes a lot of HTTP requests for you. It handles the, a lot of the encryption part for you, and so far, uh, so far. Um, but um, since there is so far no at least what I know, there are not many uh, clients actually using the Matrix SDK. Like there are not, um, there are not many clients who, who try to build an, an entire client around the Matrix SDK. There are some, but um, not as many. So some features are missing or uh, the API, like how you interact with the Rust SDK is not that nice or it's complicated or the documentation is not the best there uh, it can be because it's also a really young project and mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how many years it's out there already but it's definitely not far from stable so we I also spend a lot of time fixing stuff there trying to push features we need upstream to the matrix SDK so other people can use it, not work around issues downstream in, uh, in Fractal Next. So the idea is that Fractal Next is just a front a GTK front end for the matrix SDK um, in the large uh, scheme mm. of things. Um, so I I worked a lot on, for example, the the persistent store of message or message caching, as room history caching, which still is not merged because um, for different reasons, I wanted to do a persistent store where you have the full room history offline stored, but unfortunately that's currently a possible matrix. And yeah, I would really like to have that because Reckless and a native client, so we can have an offline experience, or we would like to have a good one. Therefore, we also need an off offline store uh, room history. And I'm guessing that's and, also uh, useful when you do the sync and you're not connected to the server yet, and you want to yeah. read the backlog. Exactly. Mm. Um, and I did a lot of other small things. Um, I worked on, um, but mostly on a higher, um, higher API, like how you as a developer interact with the uh, matrix Rust SDK. Worked on that. Um, Sounds like a lot yeah. of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. 
How much time do you spend working on Fractal? On Fractal? Um, on pretty much the full week. Uh, pretty much the full week. Like, uh, full time? I work, I work for full time on, uh, on the SDK, uh, on Fractal Next, which, which includes, includes also work on the SDK. I honestly would like to spend much more time on the SDK, but um, we may, may, we will talk later about that. Um, how I can afford to work full time on well, Next. I was going to say this is sponsored by the NLNet fund. Yeah, th this is sponsored by NLNet, so pretty much directly from the U uh, European Commission, which is like uh, awesome. Like, uh, thank you so much. If somebody from NL uh, NLNet is listening in, uh, which is a huge opp opportunity. And unfortunately, I didn't um, plan to work that much on the Matrix SDK beforehand, which I sh maybe should have. But now I'm. It, it, it still works. Like we we're, we're getting somewhere, and um, there's just so much to do. And I think um, so. What's to do? What's the? What are the next steps? What are you going to work on? Obviously, you said um, verification, also support for more message types. Yeah, what exactly. Else? Sorry? What else? What else? Um, we don't have the account settings, like you can't interact at all with your account. Then we will need to work on on the key backup, like um, which probably will change soon in Matrix, so I'm not sure how that will work. Um, then we will have key export, like things what element has. Mm -hmm. um, then did I say already account settings? Yeah. Uh, more more integration of the room history. We have a couple of issues currently that um, Fractal Next just hangs for no apparent reason, which needs investigation. I'm close to figuring out what's going on and fixing it, but it's still it, it's a problem when you're working on, with um, bleeding edge technology like the Matrix SDK. Mm. Um, what else? Uh, ah, yeah. Um, Tombstone events like uh, room upgrade. Tombstone events are room upgrades, like that you have a good experience uh, switching between newer versions of uh, rooms. Not sure how we are going to do it if we are doing it like Element is doing or ma make it integra integrate in one single room so you don't lose your room history. Mm. As far as I know, Element is considering doing what you just described, which is having uh, instead of having a link to the previous and to the next room, uh, having a single history which makes it seamless. Yeah, exactly. There's also talk about um, doing it the actual in the server side, like merge the room history in the server side. Um, but I did not really look into it yet, but I will have to. Well, you have a lot on your plate already. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Uh, before um, we go, any last words? Anything you wanted to mention? Mm. Uh, right now, nothing comes to my mind, actually. Okay. Um, That's fair. But, but we, I think we, we said a lot, and yeah. um, I hope I gave a good overview what's Fractal Next and about the current state. And let's hope that we can move forward in... Um, in the same manner we have been right now. Sounds good. I will and I always, the, sorry, go ahead. 
and obviously a big thanks to all the contributors who show up also randomly like it, also small things are like helpful and for me it gives also back of like uh it's giving a boost of energy to to keep working on it because you, you see other people are also interested in the project and they contribute also one-liner and it's just it's it's a nice thing about community work or a community project like this one where you can interact with um people you don't know actually and mm -hmm. that's a great experience so thank you much to everybody who contributed something to fractal next or also to fractal well thank you for your work thank you for this interview i will put links in the description so people can find you and thanks for watching bye Bye, thank you.